Come on, get him up, get him up. Look at this. Big Google eyes over here. Thank you, brother. Local alcohol called a palm wine. <laughs> Be free, you big rig. What's going on, doggies? Welcome back to another video. It feels extremely weird doing this inside a house, but we're doing it. Ooh, gotta keep my voice down. It's one o'clock in the morning and my girlfriend's sleeping, but as I was saying, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a fishing mission from the very, very start to the very, very end. So I'm gonna take you guys from when I wake up. It is now 1.10 in the morning. I've had about two and a half to three hours sleep. Probably looked like a half-sucked mango, but that's the way it goes. Um, just finished a coffee, probably gonna make one more coffee, but I'm gonna take you guys on exactly how I do set up for a day's fishing, what I do, there's procedures before we even get to the boat because it's literally one o'clock in the morning now. We don't get to the boat ramp till about 4.30. So it's a whole lot of stuff in between that goes on, which you guys never really get to see. So I'm gonna take you along on the journey and um, hopefully we get some big fish. It's just gone a new moon, massive tides. Um, every time I go fishing, man, I'm excited. It's one o'clock in the morning and I'm already absolutely fizzing. So this room that I'm in right now, this is my little fishing room. I've got all my junk on my bed there. That's where the magic happens. That's where I edit all the videos down there. And um, I'll show you guys what I take on a fishing mission in Bali. All right, so this room is an absolute pigsty right now because as most of you guys know, we are packing up. We are going back to Australia. Unfortunately, yesterday, not yesterday, the day before, my mate dropped off his spear gun. So he left me a spear gun, a pair of flippers, which are 10 times too big, but Hopefully, maybe I'll get to punch a video out in Bali spearfishing before we leave. We've only got a couple of days left before we head back to Australia, so we'll see how we go. But pretty much this is what every morning looks like for me when I go fishing. You guys never get to see this, so I'll take you through the process. So we've got a raincoat and a dry bag. We have the jigging rod and the noodle rod here. That's the only two rods I'm going to be taking today. We have a, batch, a box full of GoPro batteries, the noodle rod reel, the new um, jigging reel that I bought. And then I'm gonna try out these jigs. These jigs are incredible. These are the ones that I've been using lately and getting a lot of fish. This is just a bigger jig, it's a 550. And these things are incredible. You match that jig up with a set of these hooks, you are in for an absolute rod, rod bending session. So I just got these delivered yesterday. They are absolutely unbelievably good jigs. I'll run you through them later on the boat. Got a little bit of a GoPro mount for the boat head cam and then oh check this out dude this is devastating do you know what that is that is the tip of the noodle rod man i broke the tip of the noodle rod off yesterday when i was fishing with mates down the river you're kidding i didn't even get on a fish it snapped off when i was running through the mangroves but we'll have to get another one of them and then in me esky usually in bali we take eskies fishing it's like a waterproof esky because the boats get so wet these little eskies keep everything super dry and inside here packet of fisherman friends original don't leave home without them and then i got just a couple of pair of pliers in this little bag sun cream zinc knife um what else have we got a little bit of a rag just a bit of bits and pieces but that is pretty much shut up man this is the third time this morning Bart. that's gonna go off again but that is pretty much everything I take. Raincoat, batteries, fishing reels, fishing rods, jigs. I've got a couple more jigs in this box here. And um, that's pretty much everything I take on a day fishing. All right, that is pretty much everything. I've got the esky on the bike, got me rods, got me bag. We are pretty much set for an amazing day. I did forget to show you guys one very, very important thing, but I might hold that off onto the boat. If we get an amberjack today, it is gonna be incredibly bloody beautiful. So that's what's going on right now. It is 1.35 in the morning, exactly 1.36 in the morning, and we are about to shoot. So let's get out there. Hopefully we get a couple of big fish and hopefully we can use this special ingredient that I just added on the, um, added into my bag. See ya, Big Mac! <laughs> I'm so loud, it's 1.30 in the morning. All right, guys, I'll see you on the bike. I mean, I'll see you, yeah, I'll probably see you on the bike. I'm gonna jump on right now. Let's get this done. Woo! All 
All right, so we have just arrived at the captain's house. The last thing to go into his car are my rods, so I'm just gonna chuck these rods into the car. Obviously, you guys can hear the zombie dogs. They still own the mornings in Bali right now. <laughs> They're going off their heads. But I wanna show you guys a, a good luck rooster. All right, we've got two coffees waiting for us to go there. Look at this thing now. Listen to these dogs, dude. They go off their heads. But look at this thing, man. This is the good luck rooster. Good morning. We're gonna get fished. Oh, look how angry this thing is, man. This is why it's good luck. <laughs> the boys are out there filling up. And um, yeah, this is one of the many stops we've got to make. We've also got to get fuel, ice, oil, because it's a two stroke engine. There's a whole lot of things we need to grab on the way. And I'll do a quick time check. It is currently three o'clock in the morning. So we are making absolutely amazing time right now. Still a bit of a drive, still a couple of stops to do, but <sighs> spirits are high. So this is basically what these little shops look like at this time of the morning. We've got a local alcohol called a palm wine. This stuff will send you to the absolute bloody stremosphere and back. That's like a local alcohol they make here. I've just got fridges. You've got the choice to take a couple of beers fishing, your colt, orange juice, coke, all the stuff. There's me change. Thank you, sir. And then you can grab yourself like chicken and rice, all of your crackers and stuff. All right, we're out of here. Thank you, brother. All right, we have just arrived at the harbor. It has just gone four o'clock in the morning. So we have picked up everything we need for the day fishing. And um, listen to these tunes that we've been pumping the whole drive, man. Some Belgium chick left this CD in the captain's car. And this is what we've been listening to. It's like a Tomorrowland remix, man. <laughs> this will get you ready for any fishing trip, man. All right, I'm pumped. I hope you're pumped too. We're gonna go get some big dogs. We're gonna load up the boat, the esky, the fuel, the ice, the rods, the fishing gear, and we're gonna get out there. So a um, little bit of ginning around on the jetty behind me and we're off. So let's get into this. All right, here we go. It's happening. We're finally out on the boat. We're in the vessel right now. This in the background, you can see is the harbor. It is still completely pitch black. Do a quick time check. It's currently five o'clock in the morning right now. So we've probably got another hour before that sun pops up. What we want to do, we want to be on location before that sun actually pops up or just as the sun pops up kind of thing. So we've got about an hour steam to where we're going. It is beautiful, There's a little bit of wind, but nothing to worry about. It's a glassy looking marina right now and um, Let's go, next time I see you guys, it'll hopefully be sunrise, and um, we're gonna have some big bending rods, fingers crossed anyway. Let's go. That sun is just about to pop its head up. It's probably still about 15 minutes away from actually coming up, but a little bit, we've got about 15 minutes before it popped its head up, and we are on location. So we're gonna start fishing right now. I've got a 550 gram jig on. We're gonna be dropping them down around 200 meters of water. And um, obviously if we hook up to a fish, it's going to be hard to film because it's still pretty much pitch black out here. But this is exactly how it goes from the, from the time I wake up to this point right now. Every day is pretty much exactly like this. So here we go. We're about to drop jigs. Hopefully we get tight lines on one of the first or second drop, but you just never know. This is fishing. Let's do it. Ow! Good morning. It's officially morning. The sun is up. We are fizzing and um, we have got a whole lot of competition today, so where we're fishing right now isn't usually where I would usually take you guys fishing. It's coming into windy season in Indonesia and where we go fishing is super wide. It's really far around the back of this island. And right now we cannot fish it. It's unfishable, it's dangerous, it's hectic, it's currents, there's wind. You just can't fish there. So we're fishing another place on the other side of the island. But yesterday the boys killed it here fishing. And what happens in Indonesia, if someone gets something, they put it on Facebook, the word gets out, and then people flock to that area to try to get the fish while they're still there. So I'll show you what we're competing against right now. This is the current situation. Now, if you've got good eyes, you'll probably be able to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
21. That is 21 other boats that are fishing on this one patch of reef, also jigging. Each boat has three people fishing out of it. So if you do the math, how many jigs is that that are dancing on the bottom of the ocean right now? <laughs> what kind of odds do we have of getting a fish right now? I don't know, but we're here. We're going to have a little bit of fun, see if we can get some fish. We are up against some serious competition and um, I've got some serious fishing mates in the boat here. So I'm here with... I'm back out with Randy. Yeah, good luck. And the number one captain, yeah. Cinnamon. Come on, get him up, get him up. Sorry, man. Look at that rod, Ben. Oh, give it to him. First fish of the day. Monster. There she comes. Oh, big sea. Woohoo. Oh, no. Here he is. Wow, that's, wow. A, that's big, dude. <sighs> Yeah! <laughs> yeah, doggy! Yeah, bro! Big! Wow! Hitting! Yeah, that's big, man. Big. <laughs> wow, that fish the captain got was an absolute banger. Probably he's calling it about 14 kilos. So, literally, as soon as that fish entered the boat, the wind just went ting! It is blowing its absolute tits off right now, I'm not too sure if you can see the water, but it's like super rank, it's super windy, we're getting a little bit wet, dusted by waves, but it's still epic out here, we'll do a quick time check, it is nearly 9 o'clock in the morning, so we've only got one fish on the deck and it's 9 o'clock in the morning, it's a big, big amberjack though, that's a bloody lovely fish, but me and Randy, we've got nothing, and um, we're going to keep fishing, it's going to become a little bit hard to fish now with this wind because the current's picking up and the wind's picking up so it's really hard to keep your jigs on the bottom even if we're using 600 700, 700 gram jigs still a little bit hard but we'll still we'll continue to try <laughs> it's completely rugged up from head to toe we're getting absolutely flogged by wind so what i'm going to do i'm going to roll on my last two fishing trips which you guys haven't seen yet um, we've got a couple of good fish on those trips so i'll roll those clips on just to continue what it looks like a day fishing in bali because this wind isn't normal but we are coming into the windy season in indonesia which means most days are going to start looking like this and um it's bloody windy it's rough and it's still absolute I, i'm still having a hell time but you just can't fish in these conditions you can't do deep jigging anyway so i'll roll those clips on now and I'll see you guys back at the boat ramp after our hectic drive in. All right, yo. <laughs> All right, we got color. Ruby. Oh my God, that's a beautiful ruby snapper. <laughs> that is what we come for. <laughs> my man. Hey, hey doggies. That's killer. First of the day. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Get up here. Woo! That's a good fish, doggies. Oh, oy, 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 oy. oh man, this is a good fish. We are champions. There we go, boys. Okay. That's what it's all about. That's why we do it. Ah. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's a fish. Oh, oh first drop. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I can't stop it. This is a big fish, man. Oi, 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 oi. That's good fish. There's a big dog. <laughs> man, this is insane. This fish that I have on right now hit it like an absolute road train. Look at that thing. That is a specimen of the sea right there. Oh, it just doesn't get any better than this, honestly. Look at that thing. Big barley jig. Big boy barley jig. 
That's 350 gram jig. Beautiful little fish. Yee! Wait, wait. <laughs> wait, there we go. Look at that. There's another one. Straight out of 100 meters of water. Boom! I'm gonna put this camera down for a second. And help. Oh, it's too heavy, bro. Give me that other gaff. Yeah, that gaff's gonna pop. Go. Oh, ah, shit. That is the mama. So, if you ever catch a scorpion fish that looks like this, be extremely careful touching these spines here because they hold a venom inside that spine, and if you get stung by that, I don't think anyone's ever died from it, but I'm going to tell you right now, that would be one painful experience if you get stung by this thing. So that's a scorpion fish. It's a pretty gnarly looking fish. They're actually not a bad eating fish as well. They're a great eating fish. So I might chuck this fella on the fire later. All right, so that is it. We've got two beautiful slices of the freshest amberjack. This thing was swimming around an hour ago in the ocean. So it doesn't come any fresher than that. What we're going to do is just cut it into extremely fine little slices. All right, so this is the first stage of our sashimi breakfast. It's beautifully thin slice, pieces of amberjack like that. Now we're gonna make like a traditional Balinese sauce, which is gonna get sprinkled on top of this and it is gonna taste that good. All right, so now what we're doing, we're just gonna cut up a handful of shallots. So it's gonna dice up a heap of these. What are these called in Bali? Bawang mira. Bawang mira. All right, we're gonna cut up some bawang mira or shallots. All right, we got one freshly chopped chili there. We'll whack that in. Salt. All right, now we got a little baggie of soy sauce. So we're gonna dump the soy sauce with the shallots and the chili and the salt. Sashimi time. All right, things are going next level here. We've got one more chili to put in this. So this is gonna be like proper, proper hot concoction right now. In goes that second chili. All right, so that is how this sauce is looking. This is like a Balinese traditional sauce. It's gonna taste that good. We also have wasabi there. We've also got ginger here. It's just gonna be amazing breakfast. This is the breakfast of champions, Bella. Let's taste it. So the reason that this fish is good for sashimi is it's not like a smelly fish. It doesn't actually stink like fish. The Balinese sauce, delicious. Balinese sauce finishes it, huh? Yeah, with chili, man. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Man, that is chili. <laughs> wake you up, man. That'll wake you up. <laughs> There's two chilies in that baby little bowl there. Wow, that's so good. How about this one, Ginger? Yeah, it'll be amazing with ginger, huh? Let's try a to be one. That is incredibly good right now. Wasabi will free my nose, man. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so spicy. Wow. <clears throat> Alright. We're definitely getting fish after this session. <clears throat> <coughs> That's mixed chili and ginger, man. <coughs> Drink water. <coughs> I honestly nearly just had a heart attack just then. I don't know if I had the biggest piece of chili or what just happened, but that woke me up. Man. All right, now that I can breathe again. Oh. All right. Is anything gonna go right today? That thing literally just exploded off of the esky. That scared the shit out of me. But anyway, like I was saying, round two is going down a lot better than that first round. That fully actually clogged me up. Like I couldn't even breathe. I don't know why, but <clears throat> round two, it is going down absolutely bloody beautifully. 
All I need to do is get a proper fish on the board. I've only got one fish today and it's um, one of them scorpion fish. So let's hope this cotton picks up and we can get a couple of bangers, but look at this for breakfast, mate. Doesn't really come any better than that. Cheers, doggies. All right, welcome back to the original day's fishing trip. So I just played you then a little mashup of what it usually looks like when you come out of here fishing, but right now, this is not normal. This is like full, this is like 35 knot wind right now. Absolutely blowing its tits off. We've had to come across the big deep channel which we were fishing in and now we're like hugging the shore. So they're right up against the beach. We've got about a two hour drive up the, up the beach that way to get to where the harbour is. So it is a long, bumpy, super wet ride. And um, that's what it is. This is fishing. You can't get every day good condition, but it's funny that the one day I wanted to do like a full fishing mission, it turns out like this. But it is what it is. It's still epic. We are getting absolutely flogged on this little boat right now. And um, hey, it's bloody good times. I'm having a hell of a time. And I'm gonna keep, keep, just keep bringing you guys along until we get to the harbour and see what else happens. You never know what's gonna happen out here. Be free, you big rig. All right, there goes the boat. That's the boat we just went out in. That's the boat I usually go out in. That's the boat we usually catch fish in. All right, that was a, um, that was a hell of an effort to fish today. Never ever is it that hard, never ever is it this windy. But you know what, these things happen and it's still a sick day. I'm still frothing. It was, um, obviously I've just played a couple of little bits and little bits and bobs of clips, which you probably have never seen before, of the nice days of fishing out there. Cause it usually is absolutely bloody beautiful. It's usually like what you would have just seen in the footage. You're catching like, catching a lot of those um, scorpion fish, beautiful size amberjack ruby snapper but today we got one big dirty amberjack the boys are calling it 15 kilo i'm gonna call it about 12 but it's um that's the only fish we got and we just come back into the boat ramp then and we asked the other captains of the boats and all the other boats that were out there today what was it like 25 or whatever i said before they all got nothing i think three boats got fish and that is including our boat so there's only had two other boats out there that got a fish each and that is it so Hard fishing, it's hard days fishing. I'll show you guys the fish that the captain got now. It's actually a pretty good size amberjack. Beautiful, beautiful eating fish when they're fresh like this. All right, so here's the fish that the captain got. That's a pretty bloody big amberjack. It's probably, they're saying 15 kilo. I don't think it's 15, but it is a decent fish. Like, it's way bigger than my hand. It's a lovely fish. These are a beautiful eating fish. And then this mad dog over here on the motorbike just rocked up with two massive mahi-mahi. They're big dogs, they're like 15 kilo mahi-mahi. So he caught them out of like this little boat here. <laughs> two big mahi-mahi over there. Actually, let's run over there and have a look at these mahi-mahi. I love checking out other people's fish. It's the best thing ever. There's a big dog mahi-mahi. That's big, man. That's like 15 kilo. Maybe not 15, but it's big. So he got that on a little that little boat over there. So it's pretty epic to come back from like a mad fishing trip and you see what all the other boys caught. It was actually a really, really hard day's fishing out there, but to be honest, like it's never really that hard, but it's good to see someone else got a fish. Captain got one fish and um, looks like I'll be going home to eat a little bit of chicken and rice. <laughs> oh well, that was a little bit of a failed attempt at showing you guys exactly what a full days fishing in Bali. Looks like we completely got the morning cut off from this weather, but you get the gist of it. You've got to wake up bloody early, but it is never, a, it's never something hard to do. It's so easy to do for me. If I'm going fishing or I'm going to go do an adventure, I can just wake up and be like a ball of energy as soon as my eyes open. So it's always a bloody good time. Even though I didn't get a fish, I didn't even get a fish today, but even though I didn't get a fish, I still had a hell of time. I'm still fizzing and um, that's what it's all about, man. It's just about having fun, but that's what it looks like from a full day's fishing in Bali. Usually we get we get blessed by the weather gods, but we are coming into windy season and um, that's it. That's all you can say. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Much love. If you want to get your merch, this fishing shirt underneath, this hat, smash this button here, subscribe here, and I will see you guys in the next video very bloody soon. Thank you for all the support. 
Love your guts. Ow!